What is up guys, it's Arnek and welcome back. It's not too long ago that I uploaded a video about the thick stroke effect. If you haven't seen that video, you can click up here. No, there. <laughs> to go and watch the video, to learn everything you need about this effect. However, last week Adobe launched their mid-year update for Adobe After Effects 2020, where a fairly similar tool was introduced natively into After Effects. And that's what we are going to take a look at today. So, roll the intro. Welcome to this brand new version of Adobe After Effects 2020. This is the May 2020 update, where Taper and Wave were added to the stroke settings of any and all shade layers. So let's see what kind of things we can do with this new tool. I already used it to create small plants that subtly move in the wind like these, but for you guys, I came up with something a little more interesting. For you, I wanted to create a space rocket. So let's start with the simple stroke. You'll see what I mean in just a second. You'll need to start with a fairly thick stroke. Uh, see what I did there? Navigate into the layer settings all the way into stroke and down here you can see the new tools taper and wave. For now, let's concentrate on the taper. You can choose different options for length units here, if you need more specific values, but I'll stick to percent for now. These settings might get a little confusing to explain, but I'll try to make it easy to follow. So let's see. If the start length has any value higher than 0%, it will turn the start point to a sharp edge, even if you have a rounded cap chosen. The percentage itself then reflects how much of the overall stroke length is being influenced by this alteration. So turning this value all the way up to 100% will make the stroke gradually thicker from 0% at the start point to 100% at the end. Accordingly, end length does exactly the same, just reversed. Next up you see start and end width. This can be interpreted as the width percentage of the initial stroke thickness. So by changing this value, you will return some of the previously reduced stroke width. And finally, start and end ease. These options will smooth out, or rather round the edges. And already we have a fairly good main rocket body. For the rear blades, we can use the same technique. Simply create a Bezier path, and change the end length all the way to 100%. Maybe adjust point positioning so it fits a little better. That looks quite good to me. And actually we can just duplicate the shape, go down into the transform options, unlink the scale properties and invert the X scaling. If you feel like it, you can go ahead and add a few more elements to further build the rest of your rocket. Okay, I like where this is going, but a rocket also needs propulsion to move. We can use the same tools to generate the thrust. And you guessed it, we're starting with a simple stroke again. Let's make it a nice fiery red-orange and adjust the stroke to match the engine's width. Go into the taper, set end length to 100% and increase end ease just a tiny bit. Next, add a trim pass. Reduce the end value, maybe make the stroke itself a little longer and add a simple wiggle expression to animate it. Now we also take a look into the new wave tool. Boost up the amount to see what we're getting from it and maybe adjust the cycle so it better fits the scene. Looking quite good already. And last but not least, make the fire glow. I'm using an effect called deep glow. I'll link this effect in the description below. This one is a paid addition to After Effects. 
Of course, you can also work with the native glow effect, but honestly, the results you get with deep glow are considerably better and also easier to work with. So in my opinion, this investment is worth it for sure. There you go. Our rocket is finished, looking good and is ready to fly. I already created this neat little animation using some of the techniques I have covered in previous videos, as well as some new ones. If you would like a video about how to create this noisy-like texture, for example, just leave a comment down below to let me know. All left to do is importing our rocket and make it move around this insanely detailed illustration of our moon. As you can see, I already created a null object using the trace pass function. Hold down shift while pick whipping your rocket to the null object to slap it right onto the null. You probably have to adjust the rotation of your rocket layer to plus or minus 90 degrees, depending on the direction you're going. Finally, scale down the rocket and move the anchor point back to the engine. And there you have it. I am sure there are a thousand more ways you can use this. So let's see what this handy function will take us. I still think that I will use the thick stroke fairly often though, simply because it offers more features to refine the shapes. But as these changes were freshly implemented into After Effects, I didn't want to leave you guys hanging. Again, if you haven't seen my thick stroke video, click right here to learn everything you need about the effect. If you enjoyed this video, smash the like button, subscribe if you aren't already, and ring the bell to be notified about future videos. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!